The much-awaited second season of Spy Family is finally out, and with it comes a lot more scenes of the makeshift Forger households trying to hide their identities from each other. The spy father, assassin mother, and psychic daughter pairing have managed to win over the hearts of every viewer, and it leaves us wanting more shows just like it. This is why in this video, we'll be going over some of our favorites. Starting off with the Gracefield Orphans from the Promised Neverland. The orphans of Gracefield House live their lives blissfully unaware of the fact that they're being raised like cattle to be sold off to the highest bidding demon. However, before the reveal, they pretty much resembled a proper family, even with a mother figure who looked after the children. Once they're awakened to the reality of their situation, the children, led by one of the eldest children, Emma, must band together if they want any hope of surviving. Though they have their fair share of disagreements, just like any family would, they put their trust in each other in order to avoid the cruel fate that awaits them. After all, nothing brings people closer than having to escape a human farm before it's time for slaughter. Next up is the original quartet from Hunter x Hunter. Gon, Leorio, and Kurapika had no way to know that their first encounter would lead to a whirlwind of adventures where they influence and help each other grow over the course of the story. And when you add the assassin protege Killua to the mix, you also end up with one of the greatest friendships in anime history, with Gon's absent father, Kurapika's dead clan, and Killua's family of assassins, they take their friendship to the next level by practically becoming brothers, going through all sorts of challenges and hardships together. Seeing how far each character would go in order to protect the others, you'd never guess that they just so happened to run into each other by accident one day. Moving on, we have the Demon Slayer core from Demon Slayer. The main story of Demon Slayer revolves around the themes of the loss of loved ones and revenge for one's family, played out many times by all the members of the core. Well, except for Zenitsu, of course. He doesn't really have any reason to be there other than being the comedic relief of the group. For our MC, Tanjiro, some members of the core even take on familial roles, ranging from brothers and sisters to even parents. Although Zenitsu and Inosuke are closest to the Kamado siblings, other characters such as Rengoku and Uzui also take on familial roles to the young slayers. Then we have the Karasuno volleyball team from Haikyuu. Although the Karasuno volleyball team was brought together because of the demands of the sport and each character's personal motivations, Haikyuu's strength lies in how the team all learn to work together against stronger teams. The series also explores this bond outside of volleyball, as the characters also have to face the reality of having to pass their exams to continue being able to compete and help each other in their studies as well. Finally, a high school sports anime that doesn't forget the high school part of the story. At the next spot on our list is the main trio from Noragami. The story of the unrecognized recognized god Yato, his living weapon Yukine, and his only worshipper turned love interest Hiyori takes viewers on an urban fantasy adventure with family as a core narrative feature. The familial themes pop up throughout the series quite often, especially when it comes to the other gods and their weapons. However, it's the main trio who embodies the found family trope. This is made even more obvious later on in the manga when we see Yato's actual family, who are clearly not a good fit for him or his dream but Yukine and Hiyori are there to lead him to a better future. Next up, we have the Black Bulls from Black Clover. The story of the magicless magic knight, Asta, and his quest to one day become magic king in a country where almost everyone can control at least a little bit of magic has become one of the biggest shonen hits of the last decade. A running gag among fans is that Asta's captain, Yami, is actually just a shonen protagonist that is retired from his life of adventures and now dedicates his time to teaching the new MC to also become a protagonist. Yami is also the one who welcomes Asta to the Bulls after he got rejected by all the other teams, and through their encounter, they learn to make up for each other's weaknesses by working together. Asta's addition to the team takes them from simple co-workers to becoming a genuine family, leading to some of the best team-ups in modern shonen. The Straw Hat crew from One Piece also sails their way into the next spot on our list. They stuck together through both the highest highs and lowest lows. Luffy's crew of pirate misfits is among the best and most popular examples of the found family trope in shonen. While each of the crew members has their own struggles and personal issues, it's through their family of choice that the Straw Hats find a true welcoming home. Under Luffy's leadership, they've managed to overcome impossible odds time and time again, relying on each other when the going gets tough and having fun when things are calm. The Ennis Lobby arc is a great example of this, where the crew revealed just how far they would go in order 
to save one of their own, rebelling against the world government to rescue Robin from CP9. Moving on, there's Class 3E from Assassination Classroom. The class of misfits and their alien teacher, Koro-sensei, perfectly fit the bill. Being the outcasts and disappointments of their school and families, the students have little to live for before Koro-sensei literally drops into their lives and gives them purpose. That's when things start to change. All of the students, even the most violent ones, such as Karma, display change and development over the course of the story, realizing that they aren't as useless as everyone tells them they are. Next, we have the bizarre adventures of the Joestar bloodline in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. A series that is just as bizarre as its name would suggest has some of the most realistic portrayals of friendship between humans, ghosts, animals, and even an alien and a sentient rock. Hey, the show isn't called JoJo's Ordinary Adventures, is it? The series revolves around the different generations of the Joestar bloodline, as they battle against everything from time-controlling vampires to time-controlling serial killers, time-controlling mafia bosses, US presidents, and even an Aztec god of fitness one time, in order to keep the world a safe place. Guess you can say they have quite a diverse cast of villains. However, the Joestars never fight alone, as each different Jojo has their respective fellow Joe bros to help them along the way. The show might be a living meme, but it's still one of the most successful and longest running series to this day. Have a look, you won't be disappointed. The penultimate entry on our list is a show that splits the difference between comedy and moving moments, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Kobayashi is your everyday office worker before she quickly finds herself living together with two dragons who pretty much slide their way into her domestic life as her partner and daughter. Despite the outlandish premise of the show, many of the sentimental moments in Dragon Maid lie in the interactions between these three abandoned characters in their attempt to build a true home. But of course, the show also has the full Kyoto animation package of whip-fast comedy and crisp animation, with the animation team giving equal care to both the story's tender and ridiculous escapades. And finally, we have a recent entry into this subgenre, Cyberpunk Edgerunners. Trigger's collaborative project with CD Projekt Red tells the story of David Martinez, an ordinary boy just trying to live his day-to-day -day life the way he wants to. Unfortunately, Night City isn't the place for ordinary people, as it's teeming with cyber-augmented superhumans and corrupt monopolistic corporations who own practically everything as far as the eye can see. After getting kicked out of school and losing his mother to a gang attack, David finally decides it's time to chrome up and stick a stolen military-grade implant into his body. This eventually leads him to run into Maine and his crew of cyberpunks, who live life by their own will, taking names and kicking just the life David had long been looking for. The crew becomes David's second family, and they go on all kinds of adventures filled with action and drama, a definite roller coaster of emotions. It's the perfect show for those who enjoy thrilling high-octane action mixed with tear-jerking moments that will have you reaching for your nearest source of wet wipes. Honestly, the only bad thing about this series is the fact that it's only 10 episodes long, definitely not enough to fit in more shots of Rebecca and her comically oversized arsenal of weaponry. That's a wrap for this video. Which one of these is your favorite? Is there any show that we might have missed? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you at the next one.